So welcome to the final video in the series of how to upload a file in PHP. This is going to be a little longer of a video, um, but this is where we're going to cover the part where we uh, move the file to a full-time folder and we store it in a MySQL table. So a couple things are going to happen here, and ultimately when you think about uploading a file, this is the part you think about, all the rest of it was just validation, which is absolutely essential but probably not something you planned for when you started. So we've looked at the file type, we've looked at the size, we've looked at the error codes, and all along we've had this variable called flag, and I, and I started off as true, and any time we detect a problem I flip it to false. So in other words, at this point in the code, um, if that flag variable is true, then it means as far as I know, this is a good file. So I'm going to write a little if block, so if flag, you can write something like that. If you don't write equals true, it's assumed that you're looking for true. So this little case right here represents the scenario where, as far as I can tell at this point, the, the file is a file that I'm going to accept. And uh, so we're going to fill in this if block. It would be a really bad idea to just allow people to upload files without some kind of validation. So at this point, I've determined, hey, I think this thing's worth uh, worth looking at. So. One of the things I mentioned is that we are going to be storing this in a in a database. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go get a connect script. So a connect script is certainly something you should have at this point in your programming career. Right, so there's my connect script, which is going to allow me to interact with my database. The next thing I need to do is go get that form information, because this stuff's going to get stored in a table at some point. So I've got a uh, image title. I've got a category and I've got an image, so I'm going to go get those fields as well. And so, right, I'm getting the category, the title, and the name of the file. Uh, the other thing you might notice here is I'm using the MySQLi real escape string, so that function is going anytime I'm going to get something from a user and store it in a table, you should sanitize it with this function, and that's what I'm doing there. Here's that name that I was talking about. So there's a couple of things that need to happen with the name. So this is the original name of the file. Like so in uh, this example here, it's called float.jpg. That's a fine name, but some things don't have fine names. Like a problematic name in Linux would be uh, you know, my space cat or something like that. In Windows and in uh, several environments, you can have spaces in your file names, but that's not tolerated in Linux. So I am going to use a function to strip out the spaces, and I'll show you what that looks like. And one way to do that is like this. So I'm creating a new variable called clean name, and what that does is that takes the name that I got from the file, and I take the spaces, and I replace them with underscores. Now there's, there's other things you should do, really, if I was trying to be thorough here with the name of the file. That's definitely just one common problem. Another thing I might want to do is look at the length of the file name, make sure it's not too long, perhaps look for some special characters. But uh, I'm just going to keep it at that. And then the last part of this process is addressing file name conflicts. So like for example, let's say that a user uploaded a uh, picture called mountains.jpg, and then later on another user has another image called mountains.jpg. How should we handle that? Right? Should we disallow the second upload? Should we rename the second file? Well, what we're going to do here is we're just going to add timestamps to the file names. So that's going to be more or less a random piece of text just uh, prepended to the file name. And that will resolve file conflicts. So let me show you what that looks like. And so here's a chunk of code which will take the file name. So I'm creating a new variable called new file name. I'm taking that clean name and I'm prepending a call to the time function. So this is basically just going to put a timestamp on the beginning of the file name. So this is going to, in theory, resolve most conflicts unless people to upload two files at the same time. You might also be wondering why the heck I keep creating new variables when all I'm doing, I could just be, you know, overriding them. Uh, yeah, this isn't the most efficient way of doing it, but it's easier to illustrate this way. So let me save this, and uh, let me show you what it looks like. And you see there's that name, so it's float.jpg, but it's got a timestamp on the front of it. And that's just one way to resolve those conflicts. So now that we've made the file name safe, right, by like taking out spaces, adding a timestamp, now it's time to get down to the interesting part, which is where we actually uh, copy the file over to a permanent location. So let me show you what that looks like. And so, so we're going to move this file by uh, calling this function. So 
So this function is called move uploaded files. Uh, notice I put a not in front of it. So this is a Boolean function. It returns true if it worked. It, return, it returns false if it didn't work. And so I'm going to pass this thing two arguments. The first thing I want to pass it is the temporary name of the file. So um, up in that file super global, you could see some weird little local path name where this image was being stored temporarily. I'll show you what I mean by that. See, uh, it's right there, right? This temporary little folder and a temporary name. So that's what that is. It's saying, hey, go get that temporary file and move it to this location and save it as that name, right? So that's that name I just created a minute ago. It doesn't have any spaces in it. It has a timestamp in it. If this fails, I say it failed. Otherwise, I say that it worked. And so I'm going to save this. And right, it's not going to be the most interesting thing. If I refresh, yeah, I just did it a minute ago. But if I refresh it, we'll get a successful move. And I'll show you what else is happening that you need to know about. Um, so in the code here, notice that I'm saying send it to a folder called uploads. You definitely want to do this, otherwise you're just going to clutter up the folder you're working in. Now an important point here is that this folder needs to exist, so it is your job to come in here and manually create that folder. If that folder doesn't exist, it's going to fail. Now I'm going to go in here and see how it's getting stuff, right? I guess if I want to show you, I guess it's probably worth illustrating. I will, because I'm doing some things in not real time, but if I submit this again, Oh, I need to grab an actual file just to show you. If I upload a file, you see I got some problems because I didn't upload anything at all. But if I have an actual file to upload, you'll notice that there's now a third thing in here called Smith Rock. So you can see it's actually taking those files from that temporary folder and storing them somewhere permanent. Now, this seems like the end of the process if you haven't thought much about the other part of this, which is going to be the eventual retrieval of these files. So at this point, it has a safe name. I've actually stored it. But the issue is I'm going to want to retrieve it at some point. So if you ever want to retrieve it, you're going to need to store a record of this transaction, so to speak, in a, in a database. So I'm going to show you what this looks like. And I'm going to make it pretty drawn out because that's how I prefer to do this. And so this block of code right here is going to create a table if it needs to create it. So I always like to do things like this. Um, you, you can create tables many ways, but I like to write the script for them. So whether this table exists or not, uh, I'm going to run this query. And so if it needs to create the table, it will. If it doesn't, it won't. You can see there's image IDs, titles, cats, and image. So this is just the SQL for creating a table. Right? It's not necessarily part of the process, but I like to put this script in here because I think it's good design. So if we need to create the table, then create it. And that's going to happen the first time an image is inserted. Right? It only happens once, and this is kind of a lot of code for a one-time event, but this is how I prefer to do it. So at this point, we can ensure that the table has been created. So at this point, it's just a matter of inserting just a quick little insert script. So insert into YT images, basically those values, which I've been defining here, here, and here. Right, so this simple little query here is going to store those things permanently. We're not going to need those right now, but we will definitely need those when we want to retrieve these results, which is something I'll cover in my next set of videos. So that's the process. And probably just to make this thing seem a little bit more um, rewarding, I will put a successful message down here. We'll say a successful move. Right, and so that'll let us know that it worked. Um, so I'm going to save this. And so what that'll tell you is if it gets to this line without having any major issues, that'll mean that the transaction was recorded in the table. And then I'll, I'll prove it to you in my last little thing. So if I refresh this, I get successful move, successful move. Uh, yeah, at this point, I realized that that was probably not a very good debugging message. But you can see where that one came from, right? I kind of did successful move here, and I did it here. So I, I don't know. I, I This is not the most uh, rational debugging message. So I guess I'll just pull that out. And let's go see whether this worked. So if I want to check whether this worked or not, I'm going to head over to uh, PHP my admin. That thing, that table is called YT images. If I open it up, you'll see there's one row in it. That's the thing I just inserted. So you can see that now I have a permanent record of the transaction. Let me show you one last thing here. 
So it's probably bugging you that we have all this junk displayed. Now I'm telling you that I think you do want to see that junk when you're going through the process of building this tool. But at the end, let's clean it up and I'll show you how that works. So this var dump here is definitely worthless. So I'm going to pull that out. The other thing I want to do is notice that a lot of those, the, all those debugging messages come from here. So what I like to do is way up here at the top, I'm going to create another flag. And this flag is going to be called debug. I'm going to set that equal to true, I guess. And then how about taking this thing down here and I wrap it in an if, so I'll say if uh, debug is true, then echo the output. And so since it is true, I'll show you again, this is gonna be a meaningless insert, but if I refresh, you'll see the debugging message. And in the and you'll see so that, that, that junk up there is gone, but this is happening. And so now if I'm tired of seeing that debugging information, I just flip that flag to false and now all the debugging information goes away. I'm gonna refresh again. And there's a problem with pressing refresh like I'm doing. You could probably imagine, I just inserted three things into my database, right? I've got, I'm generating a whole bunch of copies of this image. And that is a fight for another day. But basically this right here is a script that you can use to upload images. It's not entirely thorough in its validation, but it is a good start and it's a good introduction to the subject. Um, now another thing that I'd, I hope you can uh, realize about this is notice this block which runs from here to here which was about 70 lines of code. This is reusable, right? All of this, the only thing that needs to change if you want to use this again with a different project is uh, the name of the image in the form. So that you could take this and turn it into a helper function or it could be a require, right? This code you wrote, and one of the reasons I like to write it well and write the debug flags in there is just so that you can use this and it's a piece that's reusable for future projects. So hopefully at this point, you've got a functional file upload script that you can use whenever you need it. Thanks for watching.